When you think of the world's most powerful graphics card, what often comes to mind probably is the RTX 4090 of this year or so. But when you dial back the clocks to 2009, what was the most bleeding edge of GPU technology back then? Well, you're looking at it here. It was AMD's, or slash ATI's, Radeon 5970, a beastly GPU with two GPUs on the same PCB. That's something that we've kind of put away with now, but it's an awesome technology, and we're going to see how it holds up in gaming in 2023, so long later after its release. Will we be able to even launch the latest games? Well, let's figure that out. I hope you guys stick around for this one. Now as for the specifications of this beast of a GPU, the specs include 3200 shader cores, which is still pretty damn good today, 160 TMUs, and 64 ROPs. Now as for memory, we have 2GB of GDDR5 memory, one scan though, this is a dual GPU card, so any game that only utilizes one GPU will only utilize 1GB of VRAM, not very ideal. Hell, even 2 gigabytes isn't that ideal in 2023, but whatever. Now, as for API support, it's actually very good. It was the first ever GPU series to support DirectX 11, and it's still a very widely used API today, so we should be able to get by on many games. And hell, many games I don't even own, so I'm sorry if I can't test them all. Let's go, it is game time. We're gonna push this thing to its limit. Do I feel bad about taking it out of its collection on the wall and I'm about to push it to its limit? Probably. This is the ZAC 5970 we're using. This one's broken, but I don't wanna take the one in the computer out, so same thing. Starting off extremely strong was GTA 5 Online. Now GTA 5 Online at normal settings with reflections set to high at 1080p, averaged around 79 FPS, which is awesome on this old GPU. It was perfectly smooth and frame times were pretty good as well. Even in the city, FPS was still in the 70s or so, and out in the countryside you'd see FPS over 100 on this GPU, so it was really cool. For a little bit of a stress test, I decided to cause some mayhem on the highway, as you can see here, blocking it off, and FPS never really dipped that far, staying in the 70s or so and 80s. Overall, GTA 5 is perfectly playable with this GPU and utilizes both GPUs perfectly, as you can see by the top left of the screen. The scaling was great. Up next was an actual modern game released in mid-2023, that being Valve's newest game, Counter Strike 2. Now, at the lowest possible settings with FSR set to performance, the game did look a bit crunchy <laughs> with it um, set to performance, but still, that gave us a pretty good FPS average of around 68 on the office level. And since this is a more light level, I also tested the ancient map level, and that map yielded us with an FPS around 27 or so. It really comes down to what map you test. Some maps the GPU can handle, others you can't. Also a weird thing was I originally got crossfire working on this um, game, but now whenever I try forcing it, it immediately crashes, so for a little bit, CS2 did have dual GPU support. Maybe other people can get it working, but yeah. It's kind of sad that I can't get it working now. This performance was, I don't know if I'd say better, but it was still cool to see um, a brand new game utilizing both GPUs. And then of course an update breaks it, but no, overall, CS2, depending on the map you play, you can get by. It does look a bit crunchy though. Me trying to protect a dodo bird up next. No, Ark Survival Evolved was up next, a game that melted GPUs back in 2015. And on the 5970, even with Crossfire enabled, as you can see the top um, left, we are using both GPUs. It was hard on this GPU. It was probably the worst looking game overall, but not even due to my um, capture card looking weird. This is actually more or less how the game looked. You had to set the scaler down, all the settings down, and we were playing at 900p. Mainly because if you go down to 720p, it doesn't really make much of a difference. The game looks even worse. So, overall, it was a playable experience, but they're gonna have, um, just like the absolute epitome of like no anti aliasing going on. It's really jagged, but you can get by on it. And I, uh, I failed the Dodo Bird. The Dodo Bird died, sadly. I'm a failure. Overall, though, average of 30 FPS. Now I tested Roblox up next, which might be a bit of a weird um, option, but 
I mainly tested it because look at the FPS usage. I think it was actually trying to use a second core. The engine that this game runs on shouldn't be able to take usage of uh, two dual GPUs, but it was really trying to. It was using over the one gigabyte of VRAM, and GPU 2 usage was everywhere. So on Roblox Force and Crossfire, you can get by with a pretty playable experience depending on the game. Now, Roblox is a platform. Think of it like Steam. Some games will be super playable, other games will be demanding. But finding the right games, you'll get by. And it was a really weird experience. That you, G, <laughs> GPU 2 was like going crazy. And of course when I leave the game, both GPUs go straight down. So it's not doing like background tasks or anything, so... It's using the second GPU. Very weird. Pretty playable. Just make sure you play the right game. Fortnite was up next, and it was actually a rather pleasant experience. I remember trying to run this game back in 2019 on the same GPU, and it would always give me a crash. So it's nice to see that they've worked so much towards improving performance in the game. You have to once again set everything down settings wise, and the API is running on DX performance, but we got really good FPS. With our FPS coming to an average of around 105 at the end of the test, which is Beautiful actually, over 100 FPS on this thing. Even dropping down from the, the bus, which is normally a demanding part on some GPUs that are older, Art handled it rather respectively. Overall, the performance doesn't matter too much when you're dropping down. What matters the most, obviously, is when you're on the ground, so... Once again, that average of over 100, you're gonna get by brilliantly. Overall, Fortnite was beautifully playable on the lowest settings. The Forest was up next. Now this game was massive when it came to YouTubers playing it back in 2017 to 2019. Even though it was released in 2014, but whatever. I don't know. <laughs> Dual GPU support though was here in full force, and both cores were utilized quite well. The game is tremendously demanding though as you can see, so even with both cores running as hard as they can, we are given an FPS average of around 64, which still isn't that bad. Although we are running at a mix of low and medium settings, hence why it does look quite pixelated. Although I'm inclined to say this isn't that bad considering we're running on a car from 2009. Although, maybe it is bad because the game is only from 2014, so... Overall though, playable experience, and the only problems we really ran into was an artifacting issue when you um, use the axe in the tree. This was all from 30 minutes of gameplay, and I'd say, not that bad. Although it could be better. The 2016 release of Dirt Rally was up next, and as you can see, both GPUs once again had immaculate scaling, with both running at 99%. That's probably the best so far. And in return, FPS was great as well, with an average FPS of just over 100%. Now, this was all running at around medium settings, you could probably crank it up even more, but once again, seeing that 100 FPS was still pretty damn good. It does also kind of depend on the map once again, but still you're going to see pretty decent FPS on all maps, except maps with rain. <laughs> this GP doesn't like the rain. It will dip into the 40s sometimes on those maps. As you can see, if you keep the maps, just like literally any map with no rain, you'll do beautifully. The only problem we rarely ran into was not even the fault of the GPU. Some of the trees are pink. That's the capture card's fault. Overall, a great experience on Dirt Rally. Testing everybody's favorite blocky game up next was Minecraft. Now using the performance enhancing mod Optifine, we saw a jumpy but beautiful average FPS of 230 to 250. Although if you jump into a cave, it can sometimes head up to 700, which is a bit crazy. And probably puts a bit too much strain on the GPU, so I would recommend him just capping that uh, FPS to like 120 or something. Because why put more strain on GPU than you have to? But yeah, it's Minecraft. Of course it's going to run beautifully. It can run on a GT210 after all. But, to make it a bit more demanding, we also tried shaders. The reimagined shaders, which is like, probably one of the more demanding shaders out there. And we saw an average of around 15 of these. Don't mind the top, it says 84. I forgot to reset it, that's my bad. <laughs> but yeah, 15 FPS with reimagined shaders. If you're going to want to use shaders, then probably don't, but... <laughs> Using just normal Optifine and no shaders, you're gonna have a beautiful experience, of course. Overall, great stuff. It's speedrun time, baby! Woo! 
I'll move to the next couple of games fairly quickly just to save you guys some time. First up was TF2, an older game from 2007, so you'd expect to have brilliant FPS, and that it does. Sadly, it doesn't take use of both GPUs, but still, with one GPU being activated, still we get an average FPS of 130 at the high settings. Very good. Following that up, Tomb Raider from 2013, averaged around a 100 FPS or so with a mix of medium and high settings, with the AA dialed back a little bit. Still a beautiful experience, and it only dip really when lots of stuff are going on or explosions or stuff like that. Also, God bless Lorecraft. After that was one of the more disappointing entries here is Destiny 2. We had to dial it down to the lowest resolution so far of 720p, and that averaged around 30 FPS or so, sometimes hitting into 40 sometimes. The settings were at the lowest, it just looked like Play-Doh. It wasn't a very good experience, but especially if you play something like Gambit or something, or any modern DLC, it's not going to run very good. It really struggled here. Now over the week I've spent with this graphics card, it's been surprisingly pain free. This card is still a beast in 2023, but should you go out and buy it? Well that brings me to my conclusion, and that's probably not. If you're running out just to buy a graphics card to game, you should probably get something much more modern like a 1650 or something that'll beat the pants off this GPU. But it, if you're building a very niche area, of computer, like period correct gaming computer, like 2009-2010 style, then I'd say go for it. Or if you're just crazy like me, and you know what you're getting into with a car like this, and the possible like the problems that'll happen, then also go for it. But for the person that just wants a pain-free experience, this isn't the card for them. It's well over 10 years old at this point, being released in late 2009, but still, despite its age, it does show its own still quite well. CS2, for example, perfectly playable, assuming you play a more simple map, and other esports titles that can still power through. But a card like this, in an era where there's zero games nowadays that support dual GPUs, at least for the most part, it's really showing its age. And that's sad to say because it's still such a beast. And I think this card is at the the end of its life because with DirectX 12 becoming such a big requirement in games nowadays coming out, I don't know. I think it's at the end of its life with it only being DirectX 11, so it's kind of sad. I hope when stuff like GTA 6 drops, they still support 11, so you know I'll damn well make a video on this card trying to run it. But until then, conclusion pain free experience, don't buy this card. If you're a collector, hell yeah. I'd say go for it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video so much. A little bit to make. And I got a lot more coming. A lot more weird, wacky videos. Like whatever the heck this GPU is. So stick around for this crazy thing. And I hope you enjoy. Maybe you've had this GPU in the past too. Post comments below about the experience. And how you liked the video. If you liked it.